High dynamic range images are pretty easy and fun to create inside of all in photo raw. So that's what we're going to do today. So let's go ahead and jump into the computer. So for those of you who are not familiar, high dynamic range really just means that you're going to take three to five images with your camera and they're going to have different exposure values. So what we see here inside of on one is just a series of images that I took this morning to create this video and I'll kind of showcase this so you can see the power of HDR and then how you can put them all together. So we'll go ahead and take this series of images. We'll go with this series of images right here. All right. So if I were to open up this photo right here, which is the uh, zero value exposure. So this is my camera meter reading uh, for like what it thinks everything should be exposed at for a proper exposure. Well, the challenge here is I don't have any detail in the shadow uh, that's visible. So what you could do is just come into telling color and you would think, well, I'll just crank up the shadows and that's fine. And, you know, you could probably get away with this, but you lose some of that characteristics inside of the photo. Uh, and if I come over here to levels, you can see that I'm probably clipping some information out there in this image. So if I pull down on the highlights, I can definitely uh, bring back that information, but look at what it's doing to my foreground. And I've pulled the highlights back as far as I possibly can, and I'm still losing that information. So this is why high, high dynamic range really does come in handy, especially if you're photographing high contrasty scenes where I have this really bright outdoors and a very dark indoor uh, photo or scene. All right. So let's go ahead and close this out. We're not going to save that. And I'm going to show you how you can combine three images. So uh, if that was the correct exposure, this image here is going to represent the completely underexposed image. And you can see I'm losing all kinds of information in the shadows, but I retained all of the highlight information from the outdoors, right? And then we'll hit the letter G just to get back to our grid. If on one, there we go. And then we'll hit the space bar to zoom in on this file. It's got to read it a little bit here. But nonetheless, what this image is going to do, and let's just hit, there we go. Uh, you can see that the outdoors is just completely blown out, but I have plenty of information here in the shadow areas that when I combine all three of these images, it's going to give me the best of each of those tonal ranges. Now, the cool thing here is I shot this two exposure values over and two exposure values under this base image. So what that means is I have... 10 stops of dynamic range in this particular image. And that's the best way to photograph for HDR images when you're actually creating them. If that's confusing, don't worry about it. I'm going to create a video that specifically walks through the actions that you need to take with the camera. So just think of this as the post-processing aspect. And if you are already familiar with creating or capturing bracketed images at different exposure values, then you're going to be able to follow along right away. And if not, don't worry about it. I think you'll still be able to follow along. So what I'm going to do is select my zero exposure value, and then I'm going to hold down shift and I click the last one to select the final image. So now I have these three images selected over here on the right side. We have this uh, HDR merge icon. And if you're not seeing this right bumper, what you want to do is come up to window and click on show right bumper. I think that this is by far one of the most important bumpers to have visible inside of all one photo raw. And I'm not a fan that they did hide it, but you know, it is what it is. I always leave the right bumper up just because the tools that I use frequently are available for me there. Now, if you're working on a smaller computer and you're trying to get to the HDR module, what you can also do is come over to more and then you can hit merge to HDR. That's going to do the exact same thing. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. 
All right. And the more is located over here on the left panel, which that will always be visible. So we'll click merge to HDR. And we'll let this kind of look at the images. I'm just going to resize this on the screen. Let's go ahead and make that a little bit larger so we can see what's happening in the photo here as we create our HDR render. So I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time talking through every single aspect here. I've done that in previous videos. Instead, what I want to talk about is more the practical use of creating HDR inside of this panel. And then we'll expand upon that when we get into the actual editing model or module, I should say. So the first panel here, what I think everyone should pay attention to uh, before coming over here to this exposure stuff, tone and color, all that fun stuff, right? We'll just minimize that so we're not distracted by it. We're gonna come down here to the bottom left. And what we wanna do is we wanna look at our exposure values. Now, remember I told you, I photographed this with three images and I did two uh, exposure values over and two exposure values under when I was actually creating these images. And you can see how that's represented here. So 2.0 here and minus 2.0 here. With these check marks in the boxes, that means that they have been merged together with this box right here or with this image right here, which is the normal exposure value. All right. If you uncheck these, so I'll just uncheck the two over, you can see I start to get a darker image because I'm not introducing any of that brighter information. But if I check that back, you'll see that the image gets a little bit brighter by default. And I haven't done anything over here in tone and color. Now, the reason you want to do it this way before you start modifying tone and color is you want to make sure you're starting to see the dynamic range that you had on the day. Our eyes can see a whole lot more dynamic range than what our cameras can see. And this is kind of a unique way of gathering more exposure, exposure values in your image and combining them. So that that's the reason why HDR photography is so popular or at least is so useful. Now, the challenge is finding displays to actually uh, showcase HDR work. And, you know, you can't really print it because it's on a back, like paper is not a backside illuminated, but I'm not going to get into that because that's way more technical than what we need. Uh, but if I uncheck this negative two, you'll see that the image gets a little bit brighter, but that's all that's happening there. I always recommend that if you focus on getting the settings right in camera, you always leave these three exposures checked and you use the zero value exposure as your base exposure. All right. And what that tells on one to do is say this is the the base exposure for essentially, let's say, 60 percent of the image. All right. I want you to then take this brighter exposure image and expose it for the next 20% on the higher side or on the brighter side, or I guess for the darker, the darker side, I should say. And then I want you to pull back on the brightest areas and use this for the brightest areas because it's exposed darker. So there's no clipping. All right. If that's confusing, I do apologize. But if you want it in very simple terms, use all three images. That's the best way that I can explain it, assuming that you captured them well. And that's a whole different discussion because you do want to make sure that you're using your camera properly to capture these bracketed shots. But back to the software, what you have is a deghosting. And I was on a tripod, so I don't even think I need a deghosting. Uh, we're going to go ahead and actually we'll uh, click show and it looks like maybe something moved in these areas, like where you see these little red uh, specks. That's where on one is saying, hey, we noticed something moved. Now, these are all inanimate objects, so I'm not sure why this was moving. Uh, it definitely wasn't moving when I was photographing it. Uh, but 
The cool thing is if you put on deghosting medium, it's just going to clean those things up and it should select those areas from the base exposure image saying, hey, this is the file that I want you to reference with the correct information, make everything else match here. All right. Now, this becomes more important when you're photographing nature or wildlife, or I guess you could HDR it in a wildlife, but let's say you're photographing a waterfall. Obviously, there's going to be a whole lot of movement in there. And that's where the deghosting really does come in handy because you want to make sure that you are capturing that aspect of the waterfall. There's some other techniques that you could use, but I digress. And then you, everything else is really irrelevant at this point because you can change all of this. You definitely want a line checked. So I would, I would not leave this window without checking a line. And I'm not going to worry about tone and color or HDR look because guess what? I'm going to open this in develop and I'm going to be able to change all of that in my normal editing workspace. We only need to focus on these areas down here when we're working in the HDR uh, merging workspace or create HDR workspace. So I'm going to hit save and this is going to create a new file type. All right. Because it's merging multiple images on one creates a container called an on photo file. All right. And you can see that if you look up here at the top, it's now titled DSC 03473 doesn't really mean anything, but then it says HDR or underscore HDR dot on photo. So on one is creating its own proprietary file type that allows me to merge multiple images. And it's referencing those other three images that I just created. Why am I telling you this? Make sure that you don't delete those three images that on one is referencing or move them to another location, because if you do, you could potentially break this on photo file. So you want to be careful with that. All right. Keep those photos where they are until you at least have rendered a uh, raster image. So a TIFF file or a JPEG or PNG or anything of that sort. All right. And that means that you've already rendered this out of on one. I digress from that. So you can see I have some clipping issues going on here, but I can easily recover all of this information. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and hit Bruins AI. Uh, and the other note, when you create an HDR image, notice I only have one layer over here. I use three images and on one combine them into a single layer. So I'm working with only one file but it has the information of three images. And that's the power of using bracketed or HDR merging. So if I hit Brilliance AI, we'll let on one think itself through. And you can see it's kind of cleaned up the, uh, the image and we get like this cartoony HDR look. So this is the, uh, a, a similar look that people or that gave HDR a bad rap. And I think that there's better ways of working with it. Um, but if I come back to Bruins AI, you can see it just triggered it at 100%. So if I pull down on the amount here, I get back to a more natural look. So here's the before, what on one rendered for the HDR image overall. And here is the after with using Bruins AI, just very simply. Now, there's a few more options that are available to us because when the HDR image is created, it also adds in an effect for us. And the reason why I'm telling you this is if you create an HDR image and then you get the look that you want in the create HDR viewer or workspace, when you click on effects, you'll notice that I already have an HDR look in here. Now, with the way that on one uses presets, if I were to add in a preset, so let's say I want to make this black and white. If I were to add in this preset, this HDR look is going to be overridden. I'm going to show you. I'm just going to click on this and then you'll see I've added in that HDR or I'm sorry, I added in this preset, but it got rid of my HDR look. So 
that's something that, or the HDR look effect, the overall look on the image is still there, but, or the raw information is still there, I should say. The so what to this, I'm going to go ahead and undo that. If you decide that you want to use a preset after you have already configured your HDR look, either here in the effects section or in the create HDR workspace, what you want to do is right click on the effect or the preset that you want to apply. I'm eventually going to get an option here. Okay, let's try this one. It didn't want to let me right click that one for some reason. Uh, but you want to go with insert preset. Now I showed this in a previous video, but I want to show it here because this will really, this could make or break the way that your HDR image looks. So if I click insert, you can see it's now applied that black and white preset, but check it out. I still have my HDR look sitting here and I'm good to go. All of this is on top of that. So now we're starting to get into how the effect stack really works with the HDR look being the base look of the image and then everything else going on top of that. So I still keep the HDR look, but now I've added in a glow, a black and white filter and a vignette over it. So hopefully you found some value in this content. If you did smash the like button, um, if you got questions, leave it in the comment section below, because I'd be more than happy to answer as many questions as I can about HDR processing. Again, be on the lookout for the video where I'm showcasing how you can actually create these bracketed images in camera. So that way, when you come to the editing workspace, it works as simple as possible because it can be a little uh, frustrating when you think you have the right exposure values in camera and then you get back and you're like, why can't I recover the dynamic range in my photo that I really want it to recover? So that's something that it, it does start at the camera. I'm going to create a video speaking to that and then we'll bring it into on one and render those files. So until next time, I want you guys to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.